Our goal here is to see if we can graph some of these quadratic expressions, quadratic equations that we've been working with. Now, so far, we've been used to seeing quadratic expressions in that form. Well, we can also express a quadratic equation in this form. And when we can express it in that form, some of the graphing details become a little bit more apparent. Now, I'm not going to get too much into detail how we can go from one form to another form. So just for right now, I want you to accept that we can also write it in another form, where this value of h and this value of k, there are compositions of some a, b's, and c's in this particular equation that help us find something very um, some very particular information. For example, we know that all parabolas have a peak or a valley, and that point happens at a vertex. The vertex is located at the point h, k, as I can identify in this particular equation. It's one thing I can notice. Another thing I notice is the graph will be symmetrical about the line x equals h, which is the x point of the vertex, and that kind of makes sense. My value of A, that helps me determine if the graph will hold water or all the water falls out. So if it's positive, it looks like a U. If it's negative, then it's flipped upside down and all the water pours out. So I have five steps for us that we're going to work through when we're trying to graph a quadratic equation that's in this particular form. So let's look at... f of x equals minus 2, x minus 3 squared plus 8. So from that, can we get a rough idea of what its graph looks like? Well, first of all, let's try to identify its vertex. Its vertex is going to be at the point h and k. h in this particular case is a 3 and k is an 8. Now I notice that my vertex is not a negative 3 because the form tells me I have to have it in a negative position to begin with. So my h is specifically the 3 and the 8 is a k. Alright, so now I have a vertex. The next thing I want to look at, oh, step 1, does it open up or down? Well in this particular one it's a negative 2. So that tells me that it's going to open down. Step three, I want to look for where does it cross the x-axis at? And how do we solve that? Well, let's set the function equal to zero. So minus two, x minus three, squared plus eight. Let's set that equal to zero and find out for what values of x does that make it the case. Um, let's, let's put the negative, let's, let's put the negative on the other side. So I'm gonna have an eight equals a negative two or a positive two now, x minus three squared. Um, let's divide both sides by a two. Let's use the square root property and take the square root of both sides. And that's gonna be a plus or minus two. Add three to both sides. So I have three plus or minus two equals x, and so my two values of x will either be 3 plus a 2, so x can equal a 5, or 3 minus a 2, x can equal a 1. So I know I have two places where it's going to cross the x-intercept at, at the points 5 and 1. So to recap, we have a vertex, and now we have two points. The next one we want to find out is where does it cross the y-axis at? And to find that, we set the function equal to zero. So we're gonna solve for f of zero, and that's gonna equal minus two times zero minus three squared plus an eight. Work that down, um, minus two, negative three squared, which is a nine plus an eight. That equals negative 18 plus an eight, which equals negative 10. And lastly, step five, we're just going to go through and plot these points. So let's pay attention with what we have here. That's a very important point. That's important. These are important. Um, the vertex is important. And the fact that A is negative is important. 
All right, to try to get a little bit of graph, I'll graph it right here in the middle. So let's just do the graph. I know graphs down, so I'll make these points. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Um, so those are where the points are at that I think will be of interest to me. What can we determine here? Well, we have a vertex at the point 3 and 8. Oh, so I do need to go up a little bit more. So let's strike that. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8. So the point 3 and 8 is roughly right about there. It's going to be a real skinny graph here, so I apologize for that. We know it crosses the x. Um, so that's a vertex. We know that it goes down. We found out that it crosses the x-intercept at 5 and 1, so it's going to cross right there. And it's going to cross right there. And then when we solved it at 0, f of 0 equals negative 10. That means when x is 0, it crosses at 10, negative 10, right there. So those are the primary points. And we also know that it was symmetrical with the, with the x value of the vertex. And what we do from there is we just do our best to draw a nice, smooth graph that follows through all those points. And if I can just kind of smooth that out. There is a graph of this particular quadratic equation. Yes, there's a couple of steps involved. But really what we're looking for is there's four points that if we can find those four points, we're good to go. One's a vertex. The next two are where it crosses the x-axis if it does. The other one is where it crosses the y-axis at. And then we want to know if it goes up or down. We can find out all those things based on our original equation with just a little bit of work. But it's going to take some practice. So let's see if we can find some more to practice with.